been ages since I said that I would make an animatronic eye video. <laughs> and that's because they were the first animatronic eyes I had ever made. I made so many mistakes that in fact I even cried at one point. <laughs> anyway, so now a couple of years on, I can use that experience I have now to show you what I did and the mistakes I made. And these are probably the easiest electronic eyes that you can find. So to start, I want to address the easiest way I've seen some people do animatronic eyes with just one servo. I have never done it this way before because it's a bit too simple for what I wanted, but just if you're really scared, this is a great way. What you're going to need is one servo per eye, a microchip, and I'm going to be using an Arduino Uno, 5 volts of power, whether it's going to be a laptop or power bank, for example, some jumper cables, and a tiny bit of code, which I'll go into later in the video. Oh, and of course you're going to need some eyes. And maybe a little bit of glue. Oh, and how can I forget this next important part? A toy donut. That's very important. Just kidding, of course. With a servo, a servo arm that commonly comes with the servo, and your eye wall of choice, you can glue the eye onto the servo arm. Then you hook up the power and its brain to get it to move. I'll go into this later. Look how creepy that is. So obviously that version does have a lot of flaws, like its strength and the fact that it doesn't have eyelids. But I have seen a lot of Springtrap cosplayers use that exact method. So that really is the easiest way to do it with electricity. Now, if we're ignoring puppetry in general, the next easiest thing to do is what I did with my Chica and my Freddy head. Before I show you the mechanism of these eyes, I just wanted to show you how I made them by 3D printing the files I designed and then painting them. I know some of you will be curious on how exactly I painted them, so here you can see which two paints I used for Freddy and Chica. If you don't have an airbrush, you can achieve a similar effect by using a term called wet blending. Okay, so now that all my pieces from my old animatronic eyes have been printed and painted, it's time to put them together and show you why they really needed that upgrade. As I build this, I want to share a story that I've never told anyone before. One about my failures and why I believe my experience holds more value to you now. When designing Glamrock Chica's eyes, my biggest challenge was creating a design thin enough to fit inside her head alongside mine. I had no prior experience, no formal education. I put on every piece, finally securing the head in place. It looked amazing. I couldn't see it, of course but I could feel it, a pressure on my forehead right where the poorly placed servo sat. After just a few minutes of filming, reality hit me. I had failed. This costume wasn't wearable, not to my diva standards, but I refused to take it off. Almost as if I was punishing myself with tears streaming down my face, I stood seven feet tall in my bedroom and all I could think about was the negative. I believed I failed. See, making an animatronic is one thing, but making a wearable animatronic is an entirely different challenge. Fortunately, I had spent a lot of time considering safety while designing this costume, so my failure in the grand scheme was small, but in that moment, it felt massive. After some rest, I really enjoyed approaching the challenge again, and on my third and final attempt, I successfully reduced the head's weight to only 500 grams while increasing the internal space by four centimeters without making the head any larger. That small change made all the difference. Now the entire suit is comfortable, even for a weakling like me. So now that they have their sofas in, all that's left is to put the wires in and code up its brain. As you can see with these designs, there's just two servos, one controlling the blink and then one controlling the X axis, which take it from left and right. Which, if you already compare it to my Foxy, it's a completely different story. This is the mess inside Foxy. I mean, this is something that you might actually see in a real film. It'll probably look a little bit tidier, but it, it's a bit like, it's a whole brain. <laughs> I think Foxy has two for the eye movement itself, so it can go up, down, left and right in, in every axis in a circle. Then it has this blink on the top and then a, a one on the bottom as well, so there's like two. And then each ear has a servo. And bear in mind, that's just with one eye. So if I was to hook up this eye as well, so that it would move around, there would be even more. So yeah, I'm not gonna show you how I made Foxy, but it just bear in mind that it is very much the same thing, just with more servos. Um, the only complicated part was making a completely wireless controller from scratch, which I probably didn't have to do, but I did. The perks, of course, of keeping it very simple are that it's a lot cheaper, like a lot cheaper. You have to use a lot less things and it's easier to fix, but also it's less weight, which if you're wearing on your head, especially as your first head, that is a very important thing. And the final perk of having a much simpler mechanism is that you don't need to build a controller, which means you don't need anyone puppeteering it. When I'm wearing Foxy, I actually have a friend puppeteer him because I can't do it whilst I'm inside the costume. So 
yeah, keeping it simple does have a lot of perks. Also, I want you to bear in mind that this is my first ones I did. I didn't follow any guides when I made this. Um, so I do think if you're probably watching this as like an engineer or someone who's done a lot of this, you're probably looking at this and thinking, this is a much, there's a much easier way of doing this. I assume there is. Now that that demonstration's over, it's time to make these eyes move. And I'm gonna do that by using Arduino. In order to make the brain, I code an Arduino IDE. It's a free program that is recommended to upload code to Arduino microchips. For these eyes, I use Arduino's own coding language, which is very similar to C Sharp. And if you're really not sure on how to code, there are loads of things out there on how to do it, uh, but also ChatGPT can help. Right, without going into too much detail on how to code, because we could be here for hours, um, you really just have to install the servo library and then make some definitions on what servos are there. So, so for example, as we said, there are two servos, one is going up and down, that's the blink mechanism. Then we have the left and right one, which is controlling the eyes. In order for the brain to know where and how to turn this servo arm, you need to put a number in. Okay, I'm gonna use a old lecture I did at a convention a while ago to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So when you're defining it, you need to say where on this wheel that it is. So if you want it to turn just a little bit to the right, you need to say, you know, left is 60, for example. Um, and if you want it to turn completely the other way, you'll, you'll, you know, you, you put in these numbers and that's how far this arm will turn. So you have to bear in mind some servos actually can go the whole 360 degrees and they spin all the way around, but most of them only go 180. So, yeah. So what you can see in this definition I've done up here is I've put in my servo and I've ran some basic code and I've started to test it with the levers to see where exactly it needs to be number wise. And then I've just made a little note of it by calling it what it is. So full open, middle, turning right, turning left. Um, and that's what I've done in my code. So as you can see, it's here. Now, once you have that, the brain kind of knows what you're talking about when you're turning, telling it to turn left and right and or open and closed. So the other thing that's really important to note in the code is when you have two servos, for example, you need two data ports. And on the Uno, they have up to about 13 normal data points, like the rest are just for something other, other, other parts, which we won't get into, but they have about 13. So you can have up to 13 servos in theory if you have enough power. So for this one, I've just randomly chosen five and six. There is no reason for that. I just wanted it there. So I had to make sure that my data cable goes specifically into those numbers. Otherwise, nothing's going to move. Then once you've got that and you've got a delay time just so that it knows not to sort of read everything at once, there are many ways you can do this. And again, I'm not a professional. I didn't do this at school or anything. So I just hard wrote this the first time I did it. So I've given this a really weird name that's very confusing. So please ignore that. But basically I wanted it to turn right and then I wanted it to turn left. Then I wanted it to go back into the center. That's the first thing it does. Then it waits a bit, like a very short second. Then it closes its eyes with the blink. Then it opens them up and then it waits. And then it goes right and then left and then middle and then it closes again. And I just wrote this long thing for it to keep doing. And because it's written in this void loop, what that means is once it's gotten to the end of it, as long as there's nothing saying for it to stop, it will go back to the top and reread all this code again. Now all I have to do is upload this code and see if this works. One thing to note, however, is before you actually put these arms onto the servo to work out where everything's gonna be and how long the levers need to be, you need to actually make sure that you supply power to these because their natural zero, as in the reset part, can change in transport. So for example, that might happen. And now you think, okay, I'll put my arm on now and uh, when you put power on it, it just resets and you're like, whoa, this is, this is all crazy now. So just make sure before you put the arms on, you give it some power so it can reset to its natural position. And also, like, do not turn them by hand. That can strip the gears inside. I've only done that because this one is broken. You can kind of see from this demonstration that they both pairs of eyes are struggling with movement. That is simply because there's too much friction between the moving parts at the moment, and that's just because I didn't sand it or add any sort of like Vaseline or anything. And while I was telling you earlier about my story on what went wrong with Chica, I just wanted to give you an exact demonstration of what it was. So as you can see in this first design, this part here, which is exactly in the center, is really far out. 
and I needed every single centimetre I could get inside that head. So this part was resting <laughs> like this on my face, which is dumb. And then you can see with this third prototype, it's so much more compact, which meant that it didn't rest on my face anymore. And having this movement down here meant that the eyes just had a lot better fluidity, which again, you can see in Chica, as well as just shredding off the edges so that the eyes could come closer to the front of the head, which really helped and also saved a lot on weight. Oh, and there's one thing I forgot to mention, and that's how I got lights in the eyes. As you probably noticed, I actually used this transparent PLA and you can see that this is actually shining a light completely through it right now. You can use any lights in here for Chica and Freddy. I just used some tea lights. They were just like remote controlled. You can get them already pre-bought. And then for Foxy, I wired them up to his brain so I can control when to turn them on and off with the controller. Now onto Fredbear. So I will be doing something similar as I did with Foxy, but again, just improving that mechanism and making sure that it's a lot simpler in design and hopefully just a lot better. So now I need to model it and start 3D printing. Now that all the pieces are modelled and printed, it's time to paint and put them together. With all my other FNAF heads, I've actually made the designs by myself because the space has been so unique, but with Fredbear there's actually a lot of space, so for him I've actually decided to make a design very inspired by Will Cogley's. So if you're interested in his design, I've left a link in the description below. Now it's time to look at what Nightmare Fredbear's eyes will look like. so much for being so patient and what a nice coincidence that I was celebrating getting to 1 million subscribers when I made the first two parts and now here making the final part I'm celebrating 2 million so thank you all so much like seriously and I hope to see you all next month for the final video of Nightmare Fredbear where I build the head and show you guys the full reveal I can't wait see you guys there bye <laughs>